I'm Jake with Senkut Sen, and today we're starting a new series on the technical side of bending. Every day, Senkut Sen bends tens of thousands of parts, so we know a thing or two about bending. Let's get into it. On lesson one, we're going to talk about key terms that we need to know when we're talking about deep dives into bending. So I went ahead and already wrote them out here on the board, kind of in order. We're going to use this diagram right here to kind of explain what these key terms mean. So the first thing is, with this little diagram, I'm going to draw a little dotted line that kind of runs all the way out. It makes a little intersection out here in space, and this is off the tangent. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is the angle of your bend. And this angle is going to be measured essentially off that tangent and then back to that flange. On this one right here, we're going to call this 90 degrees, but this would be how you're going to measure that angle. The next thing is, we're going to go ahead and check that one off. The next thing is the apex. So the apex is that point in space in which your two tangents meet. We can write this out apex. And that apex point is a common point that we're going to have a couple different measurements off of. Um, the first one being the setback. So setback is the measurement from that apex back to the tangent point here. And so we have two measurements, the top one and the bottom one here. We can draw this out in here and we're going to label this SB for setback. We'll draw this one out as well. So with that setback, we're going to jump down here to flange length, actually. And so that apex right here to the end of your flange is going to be your flange length. And this is important to know that we're not going to measure from the inside of our flange to the outside. This is going to be determined by a little bit of material thickness and all that kind of stuff, and the angle changes it. The proper way to measure your flange length is going to be from that apex, or essentially from the outside of this flange to your flange length. So we're going to go ahead and measure it here. And this is our flange length. I'm going to write FL for short. From there, we're going to bounce back up into material thickness. Now, the material thickness is this the unformed raw material thickness that you're going to be selecting. This is what you're going to see on our website when you're selecting which material you're going to be using. We're just going to draw this in here. And this is just that thickness of that unbent section. We're going to call that capital T um, as we move forward in these videos. Now the center line, the standard midline or center line of your part is just going to be half of this material thickness. And in this diagram, I essentially drew in this diagram a, a white line or a cut through this acrylic to show that center line that's working through the part. So that little white line is going to be the center line or midline, and that's just half of the material thickness. Now bend radius. We have this point out here as the apex. We're going to also draw another dotted line out here. And that's going to meet out here in space. This distance right here from that point of contact there is our bend radius. And that's going to be measured off the inside of the part. And the reason why that's important is because the die and the punch combination, or more so the punch actually, the punch is going to determine what that bend radius is. So the tooling that is used during the bending process dictates this. And so on our website, if you go to the material, you're going to see which punch we're going to be using. And that's going to tell you what bend radius that you should have on your parts. And we can go over why this is going to matter later on in the other videos. And so with that, we're going to go into two more technical kind of terms here. One is adjusted center line, one is K factor. There's no fire, it's just lunchtime for the shop. So one of the things that we want to do is with adjusted center line and K factor, I'm going to use this rubber band here to kind of dictate what I'm going to talk about. As I stretch out this rubber band, we can see that it gets thinner in that profile right here. And so the same exact thing happens when we're bending apart, is that when we bend this, it's going to thin out. And so I actually have a different piece here to kind of dictate what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and trace this outside of this part to kind of show where it was at. So that was normal thickness. And as I place this one back in here, 
what ends up happening is we have a thinned out section here. Just like the rubber band, it's gonna thin out in the center because we're stretching that material out into the bend. And the reason why we talked about that bend radius following the punch is because this section right here on the inside of our bend, this is all under compression. It's being kind of forced into that shape and being compressed. On the outside right here, in this little area right here, you can see this area is stretched out. This is under tension. And so this right here, it's just like that rubber band. It, as it's being pulled into tension, it's thinning out. And so it gets thinner here. That is gonna make an adjusted center line. So adjusted midline is as it thins out, this midline is now half the thickness of this thinned out area. And so even though you can't really see it on the acrylic, I'm gonna draw a little arrow here. This distance right here, we're gonna call it adjusted center line. We're gonna call it little t. So now that we have that, we can talk about the last thing, which is k factor. Now k factor is not necessarily a, a dimension that's on our part. It's gonna be a, a ratio or a constant that we're gonna use in all of our calculations. And this is simply, so we're gonna call it kf is equal to that adjusted center line. So little t over our original material thickness, big T. So as you can see, the more that this thins out um, is gonna be more of a softer material. You're gonna have a larger K factor, just like aluminum versus steel. Uh, a lot of people use 0.44 as a, like a catch-all K factor, but we're gonna see in additional videos as we start doing these calculations and seeing how things are um, used in these terms, we're gonna see how that K factor comes into play. All right, so that's it for this lesson. If you want pricing on your parts, drag or drop a step file or a DXF onto Sencut Sen's website. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.